Thank you, Chairman, sir. I rise here in the defense and in support of this new amendment bill, the weapon of mass destruction and their delivery system, provision of the Unlawful Activities Amendment Bill 2022. As we know, it was an old act in the same name which was enacted in 2005, many of our esteemed members have mentioned. As the Honorable Member, my Honorable Minister had mentioned yesterday and today also, that we are compliant or confirming to the United States Security Council targeted financial sanctions and the recommendations of the Finance Selection Task Force, which was mandated against financing of the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and their delivery systems. In view of the above, there is a need to amend the said act to provide against the financing of proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and their delivery systems so as to fulfill our international obligations. The bill seeks to insert a new section, just 12A. It is not, not much an amendment in that way. In the existing law, which states that no person shall finance an activity which is prohibited under the Act or under the United Nations Security Council Act 1947 or any other relevant Act for the time being in force or by an order issued under any such Act in relation to weapons of mass destruction and their delivery systems. The bid would give the government of India powers to freeze, seize, and attach funds or other financial assets or economic resources owned or controlled wholly or jointly, directly or indirectly by such person or held by or on behalf of or at the direction of such person or derived or generated from the funds of other assets owned or con uh, controlled directly or indirectly by such person. Thank you very much. Sir, I would like to say that this bill, this, this amendment bill, it shows the deep commitment of government of India to our counter-terror measures. And I would like to congratulate our Honorable Prime Minister, the way he has taken the leadership when he took over as the Prime Minister of this country, appealing the world leaders to define the word as terrorism and to devise an international terrorist strategy. This amendment also shows our commitment to build a strong internal security infrastructure in this country. This bill also shows our deep commitment to international obligations and our this, uh, uh, conventions. The, the bill also shows our commitment that the international to international peace and the security and the welfare of the humanity. That is why I would like to congratulate uh, the, our Honorable Minister, as well as the Prime Minister of India. Chairman, sir, we all know, as has been mentioned earlier, the devastation and destruction these weapons of mass destruction they carry. We all know the cases of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in, in Japan. In Hiroshima, it killed 140,000 people. In Nagasaki, it killed 74,000 people and the survivors they support with cancer and other elements uh, in their life. Even otherwise also, there have been recent some uh, incidents, as some of my friends they have mentioned earlier, as Colonel Rathod was telling, what happened in subway in Japan in Tokyo in 1995, and in 2001 in America. Similarly, one Chechen terrorist, he threatened that he had buried a dirty bomb in a Moscow park, and he will turn into Moscow city into an eternal desert. Similarly, recently, one, one of the U.S. officials, one, one American, and counter-terrorism official, he testified before U.S. House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence that Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula has high intention to procure chemical weapons and biological devices particularly in Pakistan and Yemen. So we cannot say that the threat or the risk is over. We have to be much more vigilant than ever before. Sir, Chairman, sir, I would also like to say, it has been mentioned by Mr. Uttam Kumar, I would like to share his views. As the bill mentioned about this person, perhaps I would like also request the Honorable Minister 
Now there are firms, there are companies, there are rogue states also. Sometimes they try to uh, this, uh, fund this kind of the terrorist activities. Similarly about, as Mrs. Supriya Sule was telling, that uh, in the, even in the United Nations vocabulary and the terminology, even the United Nations, the resolution 1540, according to which we are now complying with, they have also mentioned in the CBRN, chemical, biological, radiological, and this uh, 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 nuclear, nuclear weapons. I would also request the my honorable minister whether he would like to include this kind of the thing, because there is no the clarification on these issues. Similarly, I, I would also like to request, though it is not directly related to his ministry, it comes under the Disaster Management Authority, which com, comes under the Ministry of uh, Human, uh, 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 hum, uh, Ministry of Home Affairs. The, I have attended many of the conferences, many of these workshops on the CBRN and how to defend ourselves. In fact, what is happening, unfortunately, even our say, this uh, uh, disaster management manual, it is also not very clear. Who will be the first responder? If suppose there is a biological, uh, biological attack or there is a chemical attack, whether it is, it is generally, traditionally, it is police which is the first responder for such kind of emergencies. Are our police is, uh, prepared for this? Are our police is, uh, trained for it? Are our police is, equipped for it? What has happened, what Mr. Manish Tiwari was also mentioning, in our, in our this disaster management mechanism, in the bark, the Baba Atomic Research Center, that is a nodal agency. Whether the Baba Atomic Research Center will go there or not, what will really happen? So I would like to request, if the CBR related disaster is there, is a matter of great concern for all of us. So how to, we are all a country as a whole is vulnerable to such kind of the attacks how to prepare ourselves, how to train our forces for this, and how to equip ourselves, that is really very... Nowadays, we just believe on this, like NDRF will take care of it, or SDRF will take care of it, but everywhere NDRF is not there, and I think it will take a lot of time. I think that is an issue which should be, I think, uh, uh, this... Uh. Similarly, about large facilities are required to isolate and decontaminate the, our patients and victims. There is no clarity on that in our disaster management manual. Sir, I would also like to uh, give one uh, story which has been published by one American book. The book name is Anti-Gravity Handbook. In fact, this story would not have come to our uh, this, uh, uh, notice. In 1985, this book has been published. They have given a very wonderful story what really happened. In 1965, Chinese, while they were in occupation over Tibet and Lhasa, they got some, uh, some pages, some manuscripts, Sanskrit manuscript, and these Sanskrit manuscripts were sent to one of the, one of professor, Ruth Rayana, an American professor, and a Sanskrit uh, scholar and Indologist. She was on sabbatical at that time in University of Punjab in Ludhiana. These, uh, these papers or these manuscripts were sent to her for translation. This lady translated this uh, manuscript. One, pair, one translation was sent to our Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore, and one translation of this person was sent to uh, this uh, Chinese. Our Indian Institute of uh, this uh, Bangalore, after a after few years, they came out that this is not of much use, not much use, and it cannot be used, and it is not part of the uh, book the, 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 we claim that Yan Sarvas. But after a few years, in 1975, Chinese came out with a press conference that these manuscripts, they're very, very important, and they are going to use it in making their interstellar spaceships. Years later, one professor, A.V. Krishnamurti, from the same institute in Indian Institute of Bangalore, uh, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, he mentioned, yes, we believe that some, so, some of our text, especially Vedas and Sanskrit texts, they have the references to our the spacecraft and the ornatics and all these things, I would like to request our Honorable Minister, can we have a study on this to defend our country, to defend our citizens? Can we, can we think and study these in Sanskrit texts so that we can find out some defensive mechanism? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.